Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video. Thanks once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is a Leonardo Vecina Italiana Messenger Fountain Pen. Before I get started, let me remind you that I have a podcast called The Pentertainment Podcast. It can be found on iTunes and Podbean. It's a lot of fun. This week's episode features Brian Gray of Edison Pens. Be sure to check it out. But be forewarned, it's not for children. You have been warned. Leonardo Officina Italiana is a relatively newer brand that since introducing itself to the fountain pen world has made quite an impression. The brand started with a line called the Momento Zero. Following that came the Furora. Recently, Salvatore Matrone, the owner of the brand, has released a new design called the Messenger. I asked Salvatore why he decided to name the series Messenger. He stated to me that it was inspired by Leonardo da Vinci. I don't really know what he was referring to, but there you have it. This new series is a modern line of vibrant colored pens with a more basic design. An interesting and welcome design choice for this line comes in the form of a Yovo nib, feed, and housing. This marks the brand's first departure from the use of Bach nibs, as seen in the previous pens. The Messenger series is offered in five different colors. They are green, aqua blue, orange, red, and caramel. All colors offered, with the exception of caramel, are Italian-made acrylics, with the caramel acrylic having been made in Taiwan. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. Those are limits about the pen that are either good or bad, or can be good or bad, depending on you. As I said earlier, the nib is made by Yovo and is a number six size stainless steel nib. It has a standard Yovo scroll work with the Leonardo logo laser engraved just below the breather hole. Under the logo is the brand name and under that is the country of manufacture. Beneath that is an M to indicate that this is a medium. The feed is a standard Yovo feed that has the underbelly of a cockroach look. The nib and feed are friction fit into an unscrewable nib unit housing. The nib unit screws into the acrylic section. The section threads are a metal thread assembly that houses the included threaded converter. The section screws into the acrylic threaded barrel. On the outside of the barrel is a metal thread assembly used in capping. The rest of the barrel is a streamlined tapering barrel that ends with an ever so slightly pointed end. On this pen, unlike the other pens in the brand, there is no removable blind cap. The cap is the same design as the barrel, with the same pointed end on the top. The clip is a single tension fixed clip that is secured to the underside of the barrel. Gone is the familiar mini wheel found on other Leonardo pens. The center band of the pen is a plain wedding band style center band. On the front of the center band, we have the brand name laser engraved in the new style of font. I don't know what this font is called, but all things considered, I'm just going to take the liberty of calling it the quote unquote ninja font. Yeah, I can do that. The rear of the center band reads Officina Italiana, which is the rest of the brand name. The pen was packaged in a newly designed outer sleeve. Slide off that sleeve and you have a black branded box. Open that box and you finally have a brushed looking clamshell box. Open that up and you have your pen sitting inside a cushioned grip inside a plastic pen body bag. Also included in the box is an information booklet that seemingly no one had any interest in proofreading before printing. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. There are only so many ways to talk about a Yovo nib before it becomes repetitive. I like Yovo nibs because they are reliable and consistent when it comes to the writing experience. With Yovo nibs, seldom do I ever have an issue. I like my Bach nibs too but I find that people report more issues with them more often than with Yovo nibs. So I was actually thrilled with Salvador's decision to include Yovo nibs and give them a shot. This nib is good. I like the feedback and the smoothness it offers. It's not too wet and is a mouse fart on the drier side. All that being said, I really enjoy the smoothness combined with a touch of scritchiness. Now the balance I think unposted is the way to go here. It feels just perfect. 
It's not bad or unbalanced when posted. It's just that in my opinion, the unposted writing experience is so good, anything else is just not as good. When it comes to the aesthetics of the pen, I have to say I think that the brand did a bang up job. I think the glass-like polish is fantastic. I think that my favorite one is the green one, and not just because my favorite color is green, but because to me, it's the most interesting of them all. It's creamy looking and has a nice depth to it that I really like. I like the translucency and variation of striations that run up and down the entire pen. I like the streamlined solid construction. When I'm holding the pen, it feels sturdy and strong. It's not a heavy pen by any stretch of the imagination, but it does feel rock solid. Having said that, please don't go testing your pens in any torture tests. Reserve that for pens that claim to be unbreakable. Now, here's something that I like that others found to be a point of contention with this pen. I like the clip design. It is streamlined and is an accent to the pen. I think that it embellishes the pen nicely and despite its appearance, it's not a flimsy or weak clip. If that was your initial thought, take another look. It's actually quite sturdy and offers a moderate amount of tension. I think that the simplicity of the design and sleekness of the pen as a whole was very well executed. That's all I have for the good, moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. This pen sells for $164 here in the US with our online retailers. As far as I'm concerned, that's a fair price for a turned acrylic pen made in Italy and equipped with a Yovo nib. This is a very competitive price and for sure gives other brands a run for their money. So regarding the bad, there isn't much here. That's all I have for the bad, moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. The design of this pen is definitely more on the streamlined and simpler side, which for me is refreshing. There are certainly many Italian brands out there that love to make pens with tons of intricate design elements and complications, and that's totally fine. All I'm saying is that it makes the simplicity and elegance of this design stand out more. In any case, being that this is a simpler design with no intricacies or complications, there is less of a chance for any design flaws to rear its ugly head. So, after staring at this pen for quite some time, I've seen very little that I could consider as ugly. There was something that I did find as a minor little detail, though not a deal breaker. I noticed that there was a slight variation from pen to pen when it comes to capping. On a couple of the pens, I did notice that it took about one and a quarter rotations to uncap and cap the pen. However, on my green one, it actually takes three quarters of a rotation. So for me, less than a single rotation is not enough. And the green one is my favorite, so I find myself wishing that the green one was more like the others, which it's not, so it bugs me a little. So it's high noon, decision-making time. Should you or should not pull the trigger on the Leonardo Officina Italiana Messenger fountain pen. So I love acrylic fountain pens. I like them a lot. I really like them when they are at an affordable price, and I really like them when they are made of not European grade acrylic, but actual European Italian acrylics, which is exactly what we have when dealing with the brand Leonardo, except for the Caramel. So pull the trigger on the Leonardo Officina Italiana Messenger. It's a great pen and stands on its own with other brands in the same pedigree and weight class, such as Edison, Franklin Christoph, and Esterbrook. That was my review of the Leonardo Officina Italiana Messenger. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. Be well, be safe.